Praise God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Sister Carolina, for leading us into prayer. Glory to God. The excellent name of God. El excelente nombre de Dios. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Fact. Right. Today's message is titled. God is our refuge in times of trouble. Like la la mensaje de hoy es Dios nos refugio refugio durante tiempos difíciles. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise God. Please open your Bibles to the Book of Psalms, chapter nine, verse nine through ten. Vamos a abrir las, las escrituras en Salmos capítulo 9, versículo 9 y 10. And follow along as I read it to all of you. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed and a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. Amen, amen. El Señor es nuestro refugio en tiempos difíciles. Yes, it is. After the Señor, hallelujah. Y ellos que conocen tu nombre van a poner tu confianza en ti. Señor, Amen. porque tú, Señor, no los has, no los has alejado a tu gente, no has alejado a los que te buscan, no has alejado a los que son fieles a ti, Señor. In 1989, a devastating earthquake flattened the country of America, of Armenia killing over 30,000 people in less than four minutes. En 1989, había un terremoto que, que, este, que derrotó y destruyó el país de Armenia, matando más de 30,000 personas en menos de cuatro minutos. In the midst of the confusion that followed, a father left his wife securely at home and rushed to his son's school, hoping for the best, but fearing the worst. When he arrived, he discovered to his horror that his son's school had been flattened by the massive earthquake. While surveying the rubble, he remembered a promise that he had made to his little boy. Whatever happens, I will always be there for you, his father said. The situation looked hopeless, but he just couldn't take his mind off that promise that he made to his son. He remembered that his son's classroom had been in the back right corner of the building, so he rushed to that spot over there and started digging through the rubble. Other grieving parents arrived, crying for their children, so some tried to pull the man off the rubble, saying, It's too late. They're dead. You can't help them. Even a police officer told the grieving father to go home. But courageously, he proceeded alone because he needed to know for himself that whether his boy was dead or alive because of his promise. No matter what, I will always be there for you, the father said. He dug for eight hours, then for 12, then for 24 hours, kept on digging, then 
36 hours. Finally, on the 38th hour, he pulled back the large boulder, and among the remaining rubble, he heard his son's voice. He screamed, Armand! Armand! The little voice answered him, Dad, Dad, it's me! Then the boy added these priceless words. I told the other kids not to worry. I told them that you would save us because you promised, Dad. You promised that, that no matter what happened, you'd always be there for me. You did it, Dad. You did it. A I promise is a phrase that seems almost meaninglessly in this day and age. We've grown accustomed to hearing campaign promises, cracking even before the election is over. After we make a promise, we do our best to keep it, but often we fail to do so. We don't mean to, but it just happens. A father tells his son that he will always be there for him, but then the father has a massive heart attack and dies, leaving his son fatherless. He didn't mean to do it, but the promise was broken because he was limited in power. In the scriptures, we read about a loving Heavenly Father who has made you many promises. Promises that tell us that our needs are taken care of. That our sins are forgiven. That we will never be overwhelmed beyond our ability to bear. And he has promised us the gift of eternal life. What sets these promises apart is that God is the one who has made them. Amen. La diferencia de las promesas del hombre y las promesas de Dios es que es Dios el que hizo las promesas. A veces cuando el hombre hace las promesas, a veces no lo cumple. Porque a veces el papá puede morir, la mamá puede morir y no pueden cumplir esa promesa. No es la culpa de ellos, es más la circunstancia de la, de la, de, 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 de la vida. Pero Dios que vive para siempre, el que hace las promesas, Él los va a cumplir. Esa es la promesa de Dios. Amén. That's God's promise. Amén. You see, the promises, the, we read the promises that tell us that our needs are taken care of because God is the one who will take care of them. You see, God has the power and the integrity to fulfill each and every promise he has made in Scripture. You sabes que Dios es el que, el que tiene el poder y la integridad de completar las promesas que él ha prometido a su gente y al pueblo de Dios. Amen, amen. Yes, it is. Señor, amen. amen. And like a loving father, God cares for each and every one of us. And he has promised that whatever happens, he will always be there for us. Amen. Es porque tenemos un padre que los ama mucho, que los cuida mucho, y, y, y él desea, y, y él cumple los, las promesas a cada uno de nosotros, porque él los quiere mucho, ¿verdad? Porque él tiene la, el poder, él tiene la integridad, y él los ama mucho al mundo. Amen. 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 Even as the world around us quakes and crumbles, our Heavenly Father stands by His promises. Él siempre va a estar, Él siempre va a estar cumpliendo sus promesas, ¿verdad? Pase lo que pase, no importa lo que pase en la vida, ¿verdad? Pruebas o tribulación o lo que sea, Dios siempre va a estar ahí contigo porque esa es la promesa de Dios para su gente. Alright? That's why he promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. Es por eso él, él, este, él prometió que él nunca los va a dejar. Él siempre va a estar ahí con nosotros, ¿verdad? Esa es la promesa de Dios. God will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? And God the Father has all the power to fulfill those promises. I want us to see that God is like a loving Father who cares for his needy children. Yo quiero que nosotros mirar que Dios es como un padre que ama.
ama y, 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 y él cuida a los, a los necesitados, su, su, este, su, este, su creación, sus hijos y hijas. En Isaiah 58, versículo 11, en Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11, says, The Lord shall guide thee continually. El Señor los va a guiar continuamente. And satisfy thy soul in drought. Y va a satisfacer nuestra alma en tiempos vacíos. Amen. And make fat thy bones. Y Él va a engordar tus huesos. ¿verdad? So, cuando estás delgado, Él va a engordar tu alma. Él va a engordar tu situación. Él te va a bendecir grande, grandiosamente. ¿Sabes por qué? Porque Dios tiene el poder y Él está en el favor de su gente. Amén. Él nunca, él nunca nos va a dejar solos, porque Él siempre está con nosotros. Amén. And it says, And thou shalt be like a watered garden. Amén. And like a spring of water, whose waters fell not. Why doesn't the waters of God fell not? Because it is God the source of that water. It is God the source of that living water, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there shall be like a watered garden. Amen. Like a spring of water whose waters fell not. Amen. Because God does not fail us. Praise the Lord. Dios nunca nos va a este, fallar. ¿verdad? Porque Él es fiel. ¿verdad? Él es el agua. Él es el que nos da el agua de vida a cada la, la unidad que, que tiene sed y lo tome y que lo recibe. Amen. If you would please turn to Psalms chapter 9, the text that was read to you earlier. And we want to go through this text and be encouraged by God's word. The first thing I want you to see here is that even in a turbulent world, the world that we are living in right now, God offers us in himself a sanctuary of refuge. Hallelujah. Aquí Dios nos ofrece en versículo 9 un refugio, refugio que el refugio está en Dios. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, look, look at verse 9. It says, verse 9, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Hallelujah. So if you feel oppressed, if you're going through some trials, if you're going through some difficult times, trust in the Lord because He is your refuge. Amen. Si estás pasando con problemas o pruebas o lo que estás pasando, puedes confiar en Dios porque Él es el refugio. Amen. He is the source of that refuge. Hallelujah. And it says, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, for the depressed, for the anxious, for the heavy laden, for the ones that are heavy labored, the ones that, that feel a heavy burden upon them in light of what's going on. You, God is your refuge. Amen. Jesus Christ is our refuge. Hallelujah. A refuge in times of trouble. En refugio en tiempos difíciles. Praise the Lord. That's one of God's promises. Esa es una de las promesas de Dios. ¿Verdad? Esto es nuestro refugio. Ese, ese describe el carácter de Dios. Él es el refugio. He is the refuge. Right? He is the one. He is the source of that refuge. God is our refuge. One of the first things you notice from that verse is that the fact that we live in a difficult world filled with troubles and oppression. There seems to be so much to worry about these days. Many years ago, Rick Majerus, head basketball coach for the University of Utah, captured the concern of our nation at that time. He said, everyone's worried about the economy this year. Hey, my hairline is in recession, my waistline is in inflation, and all together I'm in depression. Amen? The reality is that life is hard. Right? Nowhere in scripture are we promised that it will, will that it will be easy. Claramente en la realidad es que la vida es difícil. No hay nada en la escritura que promete que va a ser fácil, ¿verdad? La vida es que vivimos en un mundo caído de pecado. The reason why there is troubles in, in this earth is because, because the earth is in a fallen sinful state. Amen. That's why there's chaos. That's why you see wickedness. That's why you see people acting out in their rage. Amen. Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a wicked world. We live in, with people that are born in sin. Amen. Es que vivimos en un mundo caído. Es por eso hay mucho caos, caos en, to, en todo el mundo, ¿verdad? Es por eso hay mucha oscuridad. Mucha gente, este, 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 many people rebelling against God, ¿verdad? 
en desobediencia ante Dios. Porque vivimos un, en un mundo caído. Santo Señor, aleluya. Amen. So life is hard. Bad things happen to good people, to bad people, and everyone in between. Right? None of us are, 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 are uh, absent from that. All of us have our good days, we have our bad days. Now, so far, this seems pretty depressing, doesn't it? It, I thought I thought this was supposed to be to encourage us, Pastor. But before we get to really good news, we have to face the bad news, right? Have you ever heard of someone asking, "Do you want do you want to hear the good news or you want to hear the bad news?" Amen. I would rather hear the bad news so that I can be encouraged with the good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That way we know what we're going to face, and, we, and that way we know what the victory will be, right? A lot of times when we go through times of trouble, we go through some bad times, right? But at the end, there is reward if we persevere. At the end, there is victory if we persevere. At the end, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? Praise the Lord. If I, you know, we live in a real world. I want a religion that deals with reality, right? A lot of times we want to just hear good news only, but I never want to hear the bad news. But you see, we live in a real world. We live in reality, right? We don't work, we don't, we don't live on emotion or, 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 uh, or our own feelings. We live on reality of this world. Amen? I don't want a religion that plays, let's pretend. I want a faith that can stand up to whatever the world has to give and still come out on top, right? That is the whole purpose of, of going through trials. That's why God said that, that in a time of weakness, He will be our strength, right? In a time of weakness, and a time of trouble, God will be our strength, right? And that's what God rewards. He rewards perseverance, doesn't He? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué es lo que Dios da este recompensa, verdad? La perseveración. Medio de los, de los tiempos difíciles, right? That is what, that is the life that we live. So it, it is tough, but we persevere through it, right? Knowing that there will be reward in the end. Amen? Praise the Lord. And we live in a troubled world. There's a story of a pastor who had just married a young couple who turned to the groom and said, Son, God bless you. You're at the end of your troubles. A year later, that same young man returned upset and moaned. What a year I've gone through. And you're the man who told me that I was at the end of my troubles. Yes, I did. But I didn't say which end you were at. Right? In other words, just because you're married doesn't, just because you get married with your loved one doesn't mean that it's going to be hunky-dory. There's going to be trials. There's going to be tests. But in the end, you, at the end, the, your troubles will be will, 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 will be done, right? At the end, your troubles will be over, right? In the middle, you persevere. In the middle, you work things out, right? Just like it is in a marriage. There's going to be times when it's not perfect. There's going to be times when there's going to be arguments. But as long as you persevere in that marriage and you put God first in your life, in your marriage, in the end, your troubles will, will, will be over, right? That is, it is, that's the way it is. With God, right? That is how you persevere through anything that life throws at you, right? Perseverance, perseveración. Yes, Praise yes. God. Señor, if you're a young and at the beginning of your life, then you may be naive to all the troubles that is in this world. But as you get older, you will see more and more suffering and pain. And, and the older you are, and the more you have seen of this, there are wars and rumors of war. There are abusive and corrupt people who oppress innocents. And there is the downfall of our Christian heritage in a decaying culture. A few years ago, in 2015, the United States Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage all across every state in our nation. This was even celebrated at the White House by lighting up the, the, the gay pride colors. Just last year, the state, New York, the state of New York passed a new controversial abortion rights law that allows abortions for any reason up to 24 weeks, and even allows abortions up to birth in some cases. The law also allows non-doctors to perform the procedure. 
Another state proposed a more wicked abortion rights bill that would allow the termination of a baby after it was born. Governor Northam, a Democrat who was asked about the bill in a in radio interview, and his response only added to that controversy. They discussed what would have what would have happened if a child was born after a failed attempt of at abortion. He said, the infant, and I quote, the infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the between the physicians and the mother. That's suggesting that the mother and the physician will decide if the baby gets to live or not. That is murder and write down evil in its core. This kind of thing is troublesome and depressing to hear. On top of all this, our troubled world is a hectic paced world with such a high standard for success. Many of you live such a high paced lives that you are literally burnt out. You are running there and here, and you are weary, and you are anxious, and you are tired, and at, and at your wit's end. And if that sounds like you, brothers and sisters, listen to the words of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, verse 29. Matthew 11, verse 28, verse 29. says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yo te daré reposo. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. And then you see the source of that rest, the source of that of that peace, the rest, the, 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 the source of that of that meekness and loneliness and rest unto our souls is Jesus Christ. That's why he pointed us to him. Amen? It is God, it is in God, and God alone that you will find a refuge from this, this troubled life. The word refuge literally means a place of safety. And when you are troubled, God is your refuge. He is your place of safety. He is the one you turn to for shelter from the pain and strife. Much like when you were little, no matter how bad your day was, when you got into your mother's arms or your mother's lap, and as she held you tight and rocked you back and forth, you knew everything would be okay. In the arms of God, in the arms of God, in the arms of God, we find that comfort, we find that love, and that protection and those hombros de Dios that podemos, este, podemos encontrar ese comportamiento en los hombros de Dios aleluya podemos encontrar ese amor en los brazos del Señor podemos encontrar la protección amen praise the Lord that's what we trust in him aleluya it is often in those times of trouble that we turn to God, right? A lot of times when we're going through difficulties, that's the time when we would fix our eyes on God, right? We're supposed to also seek God in all circumstances where we're going through good times or bad times. But oftentimes we turn more to God when we're going through troubles, right? When we're going through situations, hallelujah. We know He's there in times of good, but it's often when we think things are not going well that we really turn to God for that refuge, hallelujah. It's in desperation. It's in desesperación cuando, cuando, está, cuando estamos buscando a Dios, ¿verdad? Es cuando buscamos por ese refugio que cada uno, que nosotros estamos pasando por algo difícil, eh, tratamos de encontrar y buscar. Amen. Amen, amen. It is in desperation that we cry out to him to protect us, to deliver us, and when we call out to him, he is always faithful and he will keep his promises. Y cuando encontramos a Dios, Él es este fiel. Siempre lo vamos a encontrar porque Él siempre está con nosotros. So cuando buscamos a Él por refugio, Él va a estar ahí listo para abrazarnos, para buscar comportamiento, para buscar amor y buscar y, y poder sentir protección bajo los brazos de Dios. Santo el Señor. Amén. 
He will always protect you and deliver you. Now let me clarify this. God will be your refuge, but the refuge does not protect you from experiencing the storm. Claramente, yo quiero aclarar unas cosas. Dios es nuestro refugio, pero el refugio no, no significa te va, que te va a proteger de, de, tener, de tener la experiencia de tiempos difíciles, ¿verdad? Todavía vas a andar pasando por tiempos difíciles, ¿verdad? Siempre, siempre, Juan, todavía vas a andar pasando por miedo de la tormenta, ¿verdad? Amen. So you're always going to, you're, you're going to have to sometimes go through some storms, right? Sometimes you're going to have to feel the strong winds around you, right? Sometimes there's going to be destruction around you, right? Amen. But God is our refuge. He shall never leave you, nor forsake you. In the midst of that storm, that's when God will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. Praise the Lord. But rather, it protects you during the storm, right? God's arms, God's refuge protects you in the midst of that storm. Hallelujah. In this life, we experience trouble, just as Jesus said. But God will see you through it. In este tiempo, en estos tiempos, en esta vida, este, vamos, a, vamos, a, vamos a tener experiencia de dificultades, igual como Jesús prometió. ¿verdad? Esa es una promesa que Dios dijo que vamos a, a tener tiempos difíciles, ¿verdad? Pero Él dijo lo que Él los prometió, que los va a ayudar por perseverar por medio de esos tiempos difíciles, ¿verdad? He will help us through it. We will persevere through it. He helped us, Lord. Hallelujah. In the storm, within the storm, one thing a refuge will do is provide you with strength, right? Strength you do not have on your own. I have experienced my in my own life and heard some testimonies from Christians about how they have gone through awful situations. Situations that they thought they could never handle, but somehow they had strength to get through it. Amen. Yo, yo he tenido esa experiencia de tiempos difíciles y yo he escuchado esta historia de otros cristianos que han pasado por tiempos difíciles que no pensaban que iban a poder sobresalir pero, pero una, en una manera u otra este, observar, este, agarrar fuerzas por medio de Dios para poder perseverar por medio de eso when, Ke when, when Corey Ten Boom was in, in her later teens She witnessed not, Nazi soldiers arrest and torture an older Christian. She said to her dad, I couldn't stand that. I would wilt under persecution. I'm afraid I wouldn't be faithful. Her father said, Corey, God will give you faith when you need it. But she kept insisting, I don't have that kind of courage and faith. Finally, her dad said, Do you remember when you were a little girl and we took rides on the train? I kept your ticket in my pocket. Do you remember when I gave you your ticket? She said, yeah, right before we got onto the train. Right, he said. I kept it until you needed it so you wouldn't lose it. God will give you the faith you need. He will empower you by the Holy Spirit according to your need. Trust him for that. Later, when Corey Ten Boon was arrested and persecuted by the Nazis, her faithfulness and strength became an inspiration to all Christians. You see, God will give you what you need. Dios te va a dar lo que necesitas. Amen. God will give you what you need. You can count on him for that. Tú puedes contar en él con eso. And that's the next thing I want you to realize, what, you, what I want you to really see from this text, is that you can trust God. Look at verse 10. Lo que quiero que usted realice en el versículo 10, que tú puedes confiar en Dios. Vamos a leer. Salmos 9, versículo 10. Otra vez. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. We live in a day when it's hard to trust anybody. A Christian shop owner determined that he was going to run his business on Christian principles. In fact, everything done within the store would be backed up with the scripture. After seeing his employee charge a customer twice, the normal price, he asked if he had a scripture to back up what he just did. 
He said, yes, she was a stranger and I took her in. We all have been lied to or taken advantage of now to the point where we are cynical whenever somebody says, trust me or I promise. Everyone is fair game. However, that is not how it is with God. Amen? Why? Because God keeps his promises. Look at verse 10 again. Psalms 19 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Y ellos y aquellos que conocen, que, que conocen el nombre, que conocen el nombre de Dios, van a poner, van a poner su confianza en él. Amen, amen. Yes, it is. For thou, Lord, hast thou forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. So the more we know and the more we trust in God, right? The more we know about God, the more we trust in God. Let's suppose that you bought a new ladder, right? Let me give you an illustration. Now the ladder looks kind of puny, but you read on the box where it says that it can hold up to 300 pounds. And a friend of yours had just bought one and he weighs at least 250 pounds. And it held him. So you have learned uh, some information plus some testimony that has enabled you to trust that ladder. So you gingerly uh, step onto it, and to your surprise, it holds you. Now you feel more comfortable, and three weeks down the road after you have used the ladder numerous times, you can now hop on a ladder without a second thought. You have learned to trust. And we read throughout the scriptures about God. And when we see how he has proven faithful in the lives of others. And when we, be, and when we by our own experiences, find him to be faithful and true. Then we learn to trust in God as our refuge. Amen. Yes, it is. Santo Señor, Cuando nosotros ve vemos en nuestra propia experiencia que en dos con Dios, que Él ha sido fiel en nuestras vidas, comenzamos a confiar mucho más a Dios, ¿verdad? Cuando vemos que Dios ha hecho, eh, que ha sido bien fiel y ha uh, cumplido sus promesas y ha contestado nuestra, nuestras esta, oraciones, bueno, este, naturalmente vamos a confiar mucho más completamente a Dios, ¿verdad? Amen. Amen, amen. So we learn to trust in God based on our experiences, based on other people's experiences as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Señor, we can trust. We can come to trust in the promises of God. And one such promise given here in the text is that for those who seek God will never forsake them, right? That's what the scripture says. The, uh, that's what the scripture says. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Yes, Amen. Yes. Buscar el reino de Dios primero y después todo va a estar agregado ante ti. Amen. Amen. Buscar, escudriñar la palabra de Dios. Escudriñar el reino de Dios. Buscar la palabra de Dios. Amen. Buscar Amen. a Dios. Amen. Seek God. Right? The proper way to seek God is through prayer. A proper way to seek God is through fasting. A proper way to seek God is through scriptures. Through the word of God. Right? Amen. Working out your own salvation, right? Seeking God and for refuge and strength. Amen. Meditating on the word of God. Amen. Meditando en la palabra de Dios. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Santo Señor. So we come to trust in God's promises. Those who seek him, he will never forsake them. That's God's promise, right? God is saying, you can count on me. I won't let you down. God will always be there for every one of us. That's the promise he has made throughout the scriptures. No matter what you're going through, you're not going through it alone. Right? God has promised you. And even in that, those times when you don't sense that God is with you, he stands by your side, guiding you and comforting you and encouraging you. Amen? Hasta esos tiempos cuando no sientas, no sientas que Dios está por tu lado, este, Dios sí está en tu lado. Él está comportándote y te está ayudándote y está en tu lado y dándote fortaleza. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Santo el Señor. Even when there's darkness all around us, God is still with you. 
Y hasta en momentos cuando todo el mundo está en la oscuridad, la luz de Dios y su presencia todavía está ahí contigo. ¿Verdad? Amen. There is light in the end of the tunnel. There is light in this world of darkness. Amen. And the source of light is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The early American Indians had a particular way of training young boys to become Indian braves. On the night of a boy's 13th birthday, after learning hunting, scouting, and fishing skills, he was put to one final test. He placed He was placed in a thick forest to spend an entire night alone. Up until then, he, was, he had never been away from his family and the tribe. But on this night, he was blindfolded and taken several miles away. When he took out the blindfold, he was in the middle of thick woods and he was scared to death. Every time a twig snapped, he would think that a wild animal was getting ready to pounce. After what seemed like an eternity, and the sun began to rise the next morning, the boy looked around and saw flowers and trees in a path. And then, to his complete amazement, he saw a figure of a man standing just a few feet away, armed with a bow and an arrow. It was his father, and he had been there all night long. Amen? God, you see, God is just like that, right? When, when we think uh, big, terrible things are happening around us, when we feel that we're in the midst of the, uh, of the woods, that we're in the midst of the desert, when we're in the midst of the wilderness, where there's darkness all around us and creepy things around us, things that will scare us in the night, God is still there. God is not far from us. He is right there, and He will never leave us nor forsake us. That is God's promise. He is faithful. Even when you don't see him, he is there. He is faithful and true. And he has promised. And he has kept his promises. He is a refuge in times of trouble. And you can trust him on that. Right? The word says you can bank on that. Right? You can bank on that. That God has, will, will, will never leave you nor forsake you. You can bank on that. That God will keep his promises. Right? Men, men. Man may, may fail their promises, but God does not fail his promises, right? He will never leave you nor forsake you. Even though, even though we don't see him, he is there. Santo Señor. You can trust him on that. In the end, we can say, like that little boy, I told the other kids not to worry. I told them that you would save us because you promised that. You promised that no matter that, that no matter what happened, you will always be there for me. You did it, Dad. You did it, Dad. Now, if you have never known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior of your life, then you're missing out on so much. I want you to know that God stands ready to be your rock and your refuge. If you are ready to make that choice, Won't you join me? Won't you please pray with me right now? Let us please stand this morning. Vamos a orar esta esta mañana. Quiero abrir el altar de oración esta mañana. I would like to open up the altar prayer this morning. If you are ready to make that choice, those who are listening on Facebook, if you hear God calling you, if you're going through some darkness right now, if you're going through a difficult time and if you see everything crumbling around you, God is still standing right there, waiting on you to make that choice. God stands right there ready to be your rock and your refuge. God is waiting for you to come to him. Jesus said, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you 
and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. God, I know that you are my refuge. Those that, that are asking the Lord as their Lord and Savior right now, as you're watching this video or later on, pray this prayer. Oh, Father, Father God, I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I am guilty of sin and that I deserve to pay the wages of death because of my sins. Father, I realize that I am in need of a Savior, a Redeemer, which is Jesus. Father, I repent. I'm sorry, God, for sinning against you, for my disobedience, for all my sins. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, Lord. God, I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior over my life. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and begin a new creation in me. Father, pour your spirit in me and cause me to be obedient to you. Father, take away the old person and make me anew. And we pray this. Those that are praying this prayer and accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. And we pray and we end that prayer in Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you this morning, Father. And we are grateful for those, Father, that, that prayed that prayer. It's a sinner's prayer, Father. Father, we pray that you pour your spirit upon them, Father. Father, I pray that you will always be their refuge and strength. Father, I pray that you be the source, their source of, of, of strength in times of troubles. Father, we thank you this morning for everything that you've done for them, Lord Father. Father, I pray that you will lead them, that you will not leave them nor forsake them, Father. Now that they have accepted you as the Lord and Savior, they have a new life in you, Father. Father, I pray that you strengthen them and guide them and direct them, Father, in your paths. Father, as your children, Father, I pray that you protect them. Father, I pray that you be with them no matter what, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for everything you've done for us, Lord. Bless them. Strengthen them, God. Father, we are so grateful to you. We are grateful because you are our Lord, because you are our refuge, and because you are our strength. Because you will help us in these times, in these dark times that we're living in. In the midst of this pandemic, you are our refuge. In the midst of all this chaos, you are our refuge. In the midst of this situation that all of us are going through, you are our refuge and strength. Father, and together we will go forward. And together, Father, help us be the light to the world. Help us be the light to this community, Father. Father, help us lead them to, to the refuge, which is you. Father, let us let, help us lead those that are, that, are in, that are in darkness to lead them back to you, Lord. The refuge and light of the world. Father, I pray that, that you bless those, Lord, Father, that, that faith, that follow you faithfully, Father. That you that, that you be with them, Lord Father, that they are faithful to you, that follow you, Lord Father, that strengthen you, Lord Father, that bless your holy name, Father. Father, I pray that you be with those, Father, that are lost and that know Christ, Father. I pray that you draw them to you, Father. I pray that you draw them to Christ to repent of their sins and seek their for your forgiveness, Lord. Father, help them realize. Christ. 
the one who lives. Father, help them realize the gravity of their sin and the gravity and the need of a Savior, a Redeemer, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we ask these things and we pray for those salvation, Lord. We pray for the lost right now, Lord, for their salvation and their restoration, Lord Father. We thank you and we say these things and we pray this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Jesus.